Okay, so this prophetic word is going to be Elijah and Elisha loyalty part three. Hey, so where we last left off at is Elijah has been caught up into heaven. God has came and got Elijah and taken him to heaven. And now Elisha, and no, 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 see, is basically left behind. Hey, and now the spirit of Elijah is now resting on Elisha. Hey, so now we last worry, and I'm going to start at, hmm, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 14. And we're talking about um, Elisha, what he does after Elijah is taken to heaven. And it says, Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to one to the water was parted to the to one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Now, when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho saw him opposite him, opposite them, they said, "The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha," and they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Second Kings chapter two, verse 16. And they said to him, so listen, this is the, the other men who were, who were just the bystanders. Elijah is now in heaven. Elisha has been left behind. And now everybody else that was just a bystander that was just, you know, back in the background, just watching to see what's going on. Hey, now they are talking to Elisha. Elijah is gone. Now they, they came over here talking to Elisha because Elisha then went back over to the other side. He left behind. He mourning. He grieving. He distraught. Hey, rightfully so. And now people are crowding around him. Whew. So let's see what happens. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 16, And they said to him, Behold now, there are with your servants 50 strong men, Please let them go and seek your master. It may be that the spirit of the Lord has caught him up and cast him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, you shall not see him. Hey, so now all these people that surround Elisha and they're trying to comfort Elisha and they're trying to assist Elisha and trying to help him, you know, trying to help pull him, you know, up out of his uh, funk and trying to help, help um, Elisha. So now they making up all kind of stuff. You know, they like, well, maybe, you know, maybe the Lord didn't take him to heaven. Maybe, maybe he, um, the spirit of the Lord caught him up. Maybe he up on the mountain somewhere. Maybe he in a valley. Hey, you got 50 strong men. We all strong. We, we about to go look for them. Let's go look for them. We about to go find them. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 16, and they said to him, Behold, now there are with you, there are with your servants 50 strong men. So they like, it's 50 of us and we strong. Please let them go and seek your master. Hey, pause. Let us go look for, we about to go look for Elijah. You know, I ain't finna just leave like that. Please let them go and seek your master. It may, it may be that the spirit of the Lord has caught him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. But Elijah's response is, it says, and he said, you shall not sin. You shall not sin. So he like, don't even go. They ready to ride for Elijah. They ready to go find Elijah. <laughs> we about to go get Elijah. And Elisha is just like, you shall not sin. Like, don't even go. Don't even waste your time. Hey, he's already sad and mourning and crying and discouraged. But he's also in a position of acceptance already. See, when I was over there, this is Alicia, what Alicia is thinking. When I was over there, Elijah already told me he was going to heaven. We already talked. We have an understanding. I know what Elijah said to me. Y'all wasn't over there. Y'all don't know what he said. 
But instead of saying all of that, you shall not sin. Don't go. It, Elisha was just like accepting him. Like, I already know what's up. I know he gone. And he said, <clears throat> and he said, you shall not sin. It says in 2 Kings chapter 2, because they trying to go look for Elijah. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 17, but when they urged him to he was ashamed, he said, sin. They sent therefore 50 men and for three days they sought him, but not but did not find him. So you have everyone coming into Elisha. Now nah, we about to go look for Elijah. Elisha like, don't go. But now they have urged him. They just keep like, like insisting. Like they being persistent. Nah, we're going to look for Elijah. We going. We going. So it says, but when they urged him to he was ashamed, he said, go ahead. He said, sin. They sent therefore 50 men and for three days. So now... They didn't got on Elisha's nerves so bad. He like, go ahead. He probably, he probably just wanted them to get away from him. So he said, sin. And for three days, they sought him. So now they went three days looking for Elijah. But thank you, Lord. How is they looking for Elijah? And they the same ones who was coming to Elijah and telling Eli. I mean, they was the same ones coming to Elisha and telling Elisha that God was getting ready to come and get Elijah. But when God, but when God come and get Elijah, everybody want to be talking about we going to get Elijah. Now they, they went and looked for Elijah for three days, knowing good and well God that came and got him. But when they urged him to he was ashamed, he said, sin. They sent, therefore, 50 men, and for three days they sought him. They were looking for Elijah. And for three days they sought him, but did not find him. And they came. Okay, so now they're coming back to Elisha. And they came back to him while he was staying at Jericho, and he said to them, and they came back to him while he was staying at Jericho. And, and he said to them, did I not say to you, do not go? So now they went three days to find Elijah. They didn't find him. Now they coming back to Elisha. And Elisha is saying, did I not say to you, do not go? So Elisha is like, y'all didn't get on my nerve. I already told y'all don't go looking for him. Okay. Second Kings chapter two, verse 19. Now the men, now the men of the city said to Elisha, "Behold, so now, excuse me, Elijah is gone. But just because Elijah is gone, thank you Jesus, doesn't mean life stops. Elijah is gone, but if I'm still here, I'm still dealing with life. I'm still dealing with everything that life has to, has to deal with. Trials, tribulations, afflictions, or whatever. So now I am faced with the reality of life is still going on and I got to move on. There's still work and things to be done. Okay, let's see what's going on. So now Elijah's gone. They didn't look for him. We can't find him. All right, y'all. We got to come to some type of acceptance and <sighs> we got to move on with the program. Second Kings chapter two, verse 19. Now the men of the city said to Elisha. So now these, the men of the city, they come to Elisha. They, they know that um, Elisha has Elijah's spirit on him. And now they coming to talk to Elisha about what's going on in the city. See, Elijah was the leader, and he was standing on business and leading and handling business, but Elijah's gone. Elijah's gone. His spirit is now on Elisha. So the same way everybody was coming to Elijah, now that we know Elisha has his spirit, everybody is now coming to Elisha because now Elijah's responsibilities and everything else and his cloak and everything that he had and his mantle has fallen. He done left me with this. Oh, he done left me with all of this. But mind you, I asked for a double portion. 
at that. So whatever he was dealing with, what I got is his times two, double. So now he is gone, Elijah, and now we are at the point of acceptance. And now the men of the city are coming to me. Maybe this is why I was learning for so long. Maybe this is why I was being led by Elijah for so long. We all have to understand that when we are connected to people, when we have people, when we are blessed with them, that it's not forever. And things people say to us and things people teach us and things people show us is for a reason. Because they know from their life experience that we may or may not experience certain things and they love us and they want to protect us and they want to prepare us. Elijah knew, Elijah was older than Elisha and he knew that our physical lives are not forever and even if something do happen to me one day, I want Alicia to be able to be okay. So I'm going to make sure he be okay. Because I'm going to teach him everything I know. So now Elijah is gone. And now the men of the city are coming to Alicia. 2 Kings chapter 2. Verse 19. Now the men of the city said to Alicia. Behold. The situation of this city is pleasant. As my Lord sees. But the water is bad. And the land is unfruitful. So now the men of the city then came to Elisha and they're talking about that the situation of the city is ple is pleasant. Hey, so, all right, everything kind of cool right now in the city. Hey, but the water is bad and the land is unfruitful. As if I don't have enough problems because Elijah left me. I got to get over myself because now there's something else going on. The water is bad and the land is unfruitful. Everybody used to come to Elijah. Now everybody coming to me, and I gotta figure out how to solve the problem. Elijah was the problem solver. He gone. Now I'm the problem solver. Hey, but the water is okay. Now the men of the city said to Elisha, "Behold, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my lord sees. But the water is bad, and the land is unfruitful." So now Elisha says. Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went to the spring of the water and threw salt in it and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From now on, neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it. So the water has been healed to this day, according to the word that Elijah spoke. He went up, he went up from there to Bethel. And while he was going on, and while he was going up on the way, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. And he turned around, and when he saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two she bears came out of the woods and tore forty-two and tore forty-two of the boys. From there he went on to Mount Caramel, and from there he returned to to Samaria. He returned to Samaria. No, no, no. Yeah, I said that. Yeah, I said. Okay. So now, Elijah, I mean, Elisha is grieving. Elijah is gone. Now, Elisha, Elisha is in a new position. And everybody is coming to him about what's going on in the city. So now he's the problem solver. And they come to him and tell him that the water is bad and the land is unfruitful. So now, Elisha is faced with stepping into his new position. And he does just that. He steps into his position. So, Elisha goes on to speak the word of the Lord over the land, over the water. And it says that the land is healed still to this day because of Elisha stepping into his position. 
speaking the word of the Lord over the land. So Elisha performed a miracle. His first miracle by himself while Elijah is gone with the knowledge, with the help of what Elijah taught him, what Elijah showed him. So the water is healed. And then from then on, hey, after Elijah performs the miracle, everything is taken care of. But after that, it says that Elisha is going up to Bethel. So he, you know, traveling and everything. And it says that some small boys, so some 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 little young boys, hey, some small boys came up out of the city and jeered at him. So they uh jeering at him, they're joking, they're taunting him, they're they're, they're being disrespectful. Some younger boys at the other day I see. They were jeering up at um they were jeering at Elisha. So they basically was making fun of Elisha, saying, Go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. Hey, so some bad little boys, they just disrespectful. They young, they small boys, and then they I see they just, you know, um taunting Elisha and you know just disrespectful hey and it says and he turned around and when he saw them he cursed them in the name of the lord so now Elisha done turned around you know finally turned around he agitated and he curses the small boys and it says two she bears so two bears that came out of the woods and tore 42 of them boys tore 42 of them boys up hey so while the little young guys, you know, was walking out behind uh, um, Elisha and, you know, doing all this. And then and I say, he's still trying to keep going. But anyway, he ended up turning around and hey, cursing them in the name of the Lord. And they didn't got towed up. Hey, because they didn't know who they was talking to. Hey, they didn't understand. Although they I say who Elisha was. Hey, and ignorant. It the day I say, and he turned around, and when he saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And the two she bears came out of the woods and tore forty-two of the, and tore forty-two of the boys. From there, he went on to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. Hey, so the revelation of this is: you've been through much. You are experiencing much. Hey. And even though Elijah, your loved ones, your close friend, your family members, your acquaintances, whoever this person may be has crossed over. You're still connected. You are still connected. If they loved you here, if the, if you were if y'all were bonded here time space distance different dimensions atmospheres nothing can separate that connection it may be separated in the physical but you know how you felt about that person they know how you felt about them and where they are they carry you here. And where you are, you carry them here. I'm going to tell you like my grandmother told me before she had to cross over. Nobody can take what's in your heart. So no matter where you go, remember, nobody can take what's in your heart. Just carry it with you. Carry it with you. That's all we can do. Furthermore, this person was your, your guide, your support. They taught you a lot. If they were your teacher then, if they guided you then, if they supported you then, that was always their role, no matter where they are. So this is also confirmation that they're still playing that role. You just can't see it. That person is still guiding you, still supporting you. So much so 
that God had me do this world. Because that person is coming to see about you. They haven't forgot. Nothing has changed. I mean, a lot has changed in the physical, but you know what I mean. As far as your connection. And I'm getting the sense of this person is asking you, do you not remember the vow? You vowed to never leave that person. And they're saying they haven't forgotten the vow. Even though they may have had to leave you in the physical, they want you to know that that was a God call. God called that. If they could have stayed, they surely would have. They did not even want to hurt you. They tried to their last breath to protect you from even telling you what was going on. That they was getting ready to be caught up. And with that being said, furthermore, because I know that you are still dealing with situations and things are still going on and you got everybody coming to you and you're trying to be a solution to every problem. I've come to give you answers to navigate it. And the instructions that I'm giving you is to, you got to step into it. You got to embrace it. Don't forget what I showed you. Don't forget what I taught you. I was preparing you. It was all for a reason. <laughs> you was always, I knew you was next up. You next up. Now it's your turn. What would I do? And know that I love you. Always. You got this. Pray. Have faith. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Believe me. Have a good day.